Hi. So I just upgraded from Cubase Elements to Cubase Artist, and now I kind of want to run you through some of the new features that you get when you upgrade. So if we go look at the comparison chart, we have all of the things here that Cubase Artist and Cubase Elements. And today I want to walk you through this guy right here, Very Audio, which is included in Cubase Artist, but it is not included in Cubase Elements. So what the hell is Very Audio? So essentially what it is, is a, a built-in tool for pitch correction. So some of you might know of plugins like Melodyne or similar that are like plugin add-ons that you add on top of your session that help you correct pitch if you have a singer that's a bit out of tune or maybe like a violin that's not perfectly in tune or that kind of single note instruments. So uh, with Very Audio, you actually have that built into Cubase, which is kind of handy. So the way you get there is if you have an audio track and you double click it, and sorry, I kind of cheated there. It's supposed to look like this when you open it. And you might have noticed that this menu here on the left changed. So let's deselect the track for a second. So this is what you usually have on the left, right? So when you click on the track, you get this menu. And here you have a bunch of stuff. Today, we're gonna talk about this little guy here, Very Audio. So if you click it, now, once again, I kind of cheated here because it's it's a cooking show, you know, I've prepared. So, But you, what you want to do is click this little button that says Edit Very Audio. So when you do that, it, it will analyze your track and you will get these little boxes that kind of show you where you are in pitch. So if we just like take a listen to this little song here and you can kind of see that this is indeed how the singer is singing. The sun is setting and all we knew, baby, I don't mind. Cause I'm ahead someplace new. Yeah, it's about time. So it essentially just analyzed the audio of the singer and plotted these squares to kind of show us which notes they are singing and also kind of if we zoom in a bit here you can see there's lines within the boxes so obviously like when you sing a note you don't sing a box you sing just like these kind of melody lines you know but then you have analyzed the uh, the lines and try to like assume which note that's somewhat relevant to. So if we look at this note here, for example, setting, setting it's an A, setting. but it's not like a perfect A, it's kind of like a bit up and down, but on average it's, it's an A, right? So most of the um, adjustment that you can do in Vario Audio, you can just, usually just do with your mouse so you see that there's a lot of like little boxes and stuff over here so let's kind of just walk you through them we have four boxes one two three four and uh, the ones on the side are just uh, length so if you if you want the note to go a bit longer or a bit shorter you want to stretch specific words uh, you can do that in much greater detail compared to working with the track up here. So if we want to like make this come in sooner and be a bit longer, Sun is we can do that. Or if we want it shorter, making the, the previous one a bit longer. The sun is setting. Let's do that again. The sun is setting. So that's just to adjust length. Sun is setting. Cool. So, these up and down ones are actually kind of shorthands for some of the settings that we have here over on the left. 
So there are two settings here that I kind of want to talk about. So first off, you see this A uh, is kind of, they boxed it to match this A. Now this one was actually kind of accurate. So let's, let's see if I can, I can pick a better example here. Yeah, here we go. So if you take a listen to these, this, there's supposed to be G probably. Baby, I don't mind. But as you can see, the box is like not entirely on the G. Or in this case, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be a G, cool. So that brings us to this first setting called quantize pitch. So Cubase says that, yeah, this is supposed to be a G, but it's not like entirely on the G. You can see the uh, the color here is supposed to be the G. So it's like this section, which is not where this node is located. So if we go to the contact pitch and just start moving this, it will drag it towards that G. Cool. So if we go back to this little box, we just have a shorthand, uh, this one. It says quantize pitch, this one says quantize pitch, so this just does exactly the same. So you can see that I'm just moving moving the, the little box and that is moving the same. So it, it's just a shortcut so you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth with the mouse. You can just work right where you are. So now if we were to put that there, that's cool, it's still a G. But you see this line here is kind of taking off on its own. Kind of going away from our beloved G here. Baby, uh so that brings us to the second setting, which is straight and curve. So essentially what it does is take the line that we have and put it closer to the middle of the box. Pretty much. So it's more consistently a flat, not a flat, but like... Let me just drag it and see what happens. So the um, the more of it I do, the straighter the line becomes. It straightens the curve essentially, like it says. So that's the uh, the bottom box. No, sorry, the upper box is once again just a a shortcut to do that. Baby, I don't mind. And what you'll notice if we do a lot of that on all of them, so we we'll quantize to the closest note. And I don't think that one actually was correct, but let's see what happens. And we we'll straighten. Now we're gonna have a very robotic singer here. Baby, I don't mind. So yeah, that is like correct but we kind of lose the uh, the human element to it. So be a bit careful with these settings. You don't want to like ruin the music, you know, but it, it's still a great tool. Now, there's a lot more you can do with just like the mouse. So for instance, you might have noticed this little scissor appearing. So that's when you hover on the uh, on the line right, right here. You can just click that line and it will split the box into two boxes and kind of reanalyze the box depending on where the line is at that very moment. So like for instance, if we look at this box, we might say that, yeah, these are actually two different notes and I want to treat them differently. So then I don't want them in the same box. So I can go here, I can split it and now I have two boxes. So I can maybe uh, quantize that one. Uh, or I can actually just drag and drop with my mouse. So if I just take this note and go boop, and take this note and go boop, and now I have two new notes. Maybe I don't mind. And I can like drag them however much I like until it starts sounding weird, which it will. Baby, I don't mind. But it's a lot of fun. And so when you drag and drop, Usually they just kind of snap to the next note, but if you want to fine adjust, you can hold down, I think it's shift. Yeah, with shift, you can slide it a bit more fine tuning. And 
Yeah, there's actually a bunch of more stuff. So if you go up here and you see the smart controls, this says defaults. So the smart controls are these little boxes and stuff. So if we change this one to show all smart controls, you'll notice that we get a lot more boxes. So the one that we talked about before are still here. But now we have one on each corner and we have this little diamond and we have another funky little thing. So the ones on the corner are tilt, volume and shift format. So I honestly don't know what the shift format does. So let's not <laughs> go into that one right now. But the tilt, you can see that if I take the corner and I drag it up and down, you, you get these kind of just the left side of the box is changed and the right side of the box is unaffected. So the tilt one on the other side simply does the same on the other side. The right side is changed, the left side is not. And now we have this little uh, diamond up here, which kind of changes where that point would be. So this is just now a very uh, much smaller area on the left and a bigger area on the right. And you can actually, on the bottom right one, you can change the volume. So if you have just specific words that you want to change the volume of. Baby, I don't mind. So let's just like up the volume of I. Baby, I don't mind. Then you can do that. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. Oh, no, uh, one more thing actually. So you can see on, on the bottom here, you can put a, a MIDI reference. So if you have like a, a MIDI track that's playing the melody, or if you have just, you wanna watch the chords or whatever, you can actually go here. Now, I don't have a MIDI track set up at the moment. But if you have a MIDI track, you can select it here and you will see those boxes popping up here as well. So you can kind of see, all right, this instrument is doing this, then this, the vocals can be doing this and that kind of stuff. You can also extract this to MIDI. So if you want, want to add like a vocal synth that just does exactly the same thing as the vocals, then you can extract the MIDI from the vocals and then like add your synth on top of that. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. And yeah. I hope you found that helpful. I hope you enjoy working with Very Audio. I find it very, very convenient that it's built in. I've been working a lot with Melodyne and sometimes it's just not very convenient to work with as an like external third party plugin. But Using a built-in tool is very nice, very nice indeed. So yeah, hope you like that. Comment down below if there's anything more you'd like to see about this. And uh, happy tuning!